Hey there gang, Kawaii50 here with another fake grand order video and it's time for us to talk about the last new servant from this Cinderella Ellie event. That is going to be the member of the Knights Templar as well as servant to some sort of foreign god out there, the five star foreigner Jacques de Molay. We're going to be going over Molay's best allies, craft essences, and command codes so this Knight of the Great Old Ones can be a truly phenomenal member of your team. I think if she was in Baldur's Gate, she'd be like a paladin slash great old one warlock. We'll go with that if you want to build your own Jacques de Molay in Baldur's Gate 3. Little, little plug for a game I've been playing way too much of. Hopefully this video ends up helping you out. If it does, be sure to go ahead, like, and subscribe. Molay comes equipped with two quick cards, one arts card, and two buster cards with an AoE quick noble phantasm. That's right, Skahawk Scotty is already a huge fan of this servant. Take a gander at Molay's stats listed down below. The main big thing we can see here is that her max HP of 16,143 is the fourth highest in the entire game. Considering she's going to be taking neutral damage from a bunch of different sources, odds are it's going to be fairly difficult to kill her. Another big thing to note right here is her star absorption at 148 and plus with a pretty solid 14.7% star gen on hit, this servant is going to have no problems generating critical stars as well as absorbing them for later use. So if you're a fan of quick crit servants, this might be the foreigner for you. Molay's first skill is Investiture in Depravity, rank A. For three turns, this grants all allies 10 to 20% attack damage, 20 to 30% critical strength, and a 10 to 20% Noble Phantasm gauge boost. For those three turns, you're also going to be getting the Evil trait applied to all allies except Molay, because that would that would be redundant. Molay is already evil. This is Molay's biggest boost to damage and that evil trait is actually going to help quite a few members of Molay's team. So either bring characters that are already evil or make your other characters evil if you're super duper into that. Max this skill first. Molay's second skill is Holy Shroud False, rank B. This gives her one turn of invincibility and a 20 to 30% NP steroid. If your allies happen to be evil, this is also going to grant your allies one turn of invincibility as well. So definitely make sure you pop that first skill before you use this. This is very, very nice in that Molay has a way not only to protect herself, but to protect the entire party as well. And a 30% NP steroid on this, coupled with a 20% from Mole's first skill, is going to grant you a 50% charge, granting Mole quite a bit of flexibility when it comes to craft essences. We're going to go ahead and max this skill second, just so we can get that 50% charge as fast as possible. And Molay's final skill here is easily her weakest. We already know that there is a buff on the docket for this. However, we won't be seeing it until 2025, unless Lysengle likes to surprise us with a buff a little earlier. Please surprise us with a buff earlier, Lysengle. Innocent Monster Rank A grants 5 to 10 stars a turn for 3 turns, increases Molay's quick card effectiveness by 10 to 20%, and applies Special Attack Curse on Molay as as well. This means that she will deal an extra 30 to 50% damage against enemies who are cursed. So that can be very helpful in pumping up her damage, especially if the enemy is only taking neutral damage from Mole. When this skill is eventually buffed, it then allows Mole to inflict curse with each of her attacks. So that curse bonus is going to, again, be more easily applicable, and you're going to see Mole's damage go up overall when this buff finally arrives. Still, we're going to max this skill last. When it comes to Mole's append skills, we're only going to worry about the first two. Extra attack boost can be great for a servant that is focused on critical damage. Being able to use that extra attack to squeeze out a little bit of extra damage but most importantly squeeze out some extra stars for that card so your character will have a good chance of critting on the next turn as well so we are definitely going to want to level up that extra attack boost and load magical energy as well good on every character mole is no exception combine this with her first two skills that is an easy turn one 70 percent noble phantasm gauge again opening up a lot of flexibility when it comes to craft essences 
雨も雨も我らの呪いの聖堂は欲するルラクスの炎の渦きその対価を止めるのは最後等しく掛け声タンプルを何時らの血吹きで染め上げバンドルディストレイズ What you just saw was Molay's Noble Phantasm, Vendredi Trey's Rank A, named after one of the best Gundam antagonists. This deals damage to all enemies, 600 to 1000% damage, and inflicts curse on all of those enemies, and also makes them take additional curse damage. Isn't that nice? Maybe Molay might work well against, uh, maybe on a curse team. Let's. Let's think about that for a second before we go into the ally section. This also has an overcharge effect, increasing Mole's Noble Phantasm strength for three turns, activating before the damage is dealt. Just like with, for example, Muramasa's, this is going to be a stackable overcharge buff. So it should overall help Mole when it comes to dealing damage while looping. Still, Mole's got that neutral damage though, so you're probably going to have. Have to invest in her skills more compared to say a berserker or something of that nature in order to make her a consistent farmer so let's talk allies for mole of course you know it i know it everyone knows it skahawk scotty is going to be your best bet with scotty you're going to be able to enable those loops for mole and allow her to become a farmer on your team with quite a bit of investment scotty also works for boss fights as well granting mole an evade on top of her invincibility and most importantly granting that quick buff and quick critical damage buff However, if you're one of those people who quite enjoys the curse team, Mole is going to be an incredible addition overall. I can wholeheartedly recommend Ashia Doman, still one of the best alter egos in the entire game, and a fantastic evil team supporter as well. If you want to mess around with an evil team in some of your story quests or something like that, go ahead and pair Mole with Ashia Doman and watch them buff each other into oblivion. The same can also be said for Van Gogh as well. I'm sure you know Van Gogh works really, really well on curse teams. Jacques de Molay, of course, has the ability to curse her opponents alongside Ashia Doman. So try this team as a trifecta, and I feel like you will be pleasantly surprised. Let's talk craft essences. If you're low on Molay's skills and you happen to have been playing FGO since the beginning to the point where enough of these have randomly shown up in your box, the Max Limit Broken Kaleidoscope needs to be mentioned because it allows Molay to easily turn one Noble Phantasm and focus on using her skills in order to buff herself up in later waves. You can also give her the Black Grail if you found a confident way to ensure that Molay is able to Noble Phantasm every single turn. This is going to be the best augmentation to Molay's overall damage and will stack quite nicely with her every single turn Noble Phantasm damage buff. If you are looking for the best freebie option for Mole, then I definitely need to recommend Traces of Christmas's Past. I see this pop up on like every single support review that we do, on every single quick servant I see, and that's just because it's that good. Quick card effectiveness, NP gain, starting NP gauge, as well as all of its tacks not attacks, stats, being squarely in attack, there we go, it is quite a phenomenal craft essence, and everyone should have tried to get a copy of this during the Christmas event it showed up in. If we're looking down into the future, because I like to make these videos evergreen, I definitely want to recommend the method to walk on the stars. This grants 2000 attack, applies a special attack against cursed enemies, and grants Mole that coveted starting NP gauge. This CE was basically made for Jacques de Mole, and I would really feel like this entire video would be lesser if I did not at least mention it, despite the fact that we have quite a ways to go before before this CE ends up showing up on NA. And finally, command codes. Curse, curse, curse is super duper good on Jacques de Molay because her entire kit is built around it. I'm sure you might have seen Knight of the Abyssal Sanctuary show up. This command code is essentially built 
four mole, grants critical stars, grants an inflict of curse. This is something she definitely wants to see no matter what. I can also recommend the lesser version of this beguiling amulet. This is a curse that also grants one critical star when attacking using the engraved card. Both of these are super duper powerful on Shock de Mole. In fact, any command code that you possibly have that grants curse is going to be an excellent pick for Mole. I can also definitely recommend the likes of any sort of critical damage command code on Mole as well. And we are going to want to keep these onto her primary cards. So when it comes to using that quick card, we are definitely going to want something like the non-existent Phantasmal Horse. This is an excellent critical damage command code for those quick cards increases damage by 20 percent on the buster cards you can give mole something like the blades of meat and doraku stick your critical damage ups to those quick cards as well as those buster cards if you are building a crit damage mole rather than a cursed one as far as mole's arts card goes we're going to just go ahead and give that some utility it is her least important card so we're just going to have it attempt to do something along the lines of a cleanse when it does happen to show up. Code Cure is going to be your best freebie option, but any sort of debuff cleanse works on this card for Mole. Overall, gang, Jacques de Mole is pretty decent, a solid addition to the quick roster and a pretty fun evil servant to use on a niche evil team. The problem that we end up running into is the foreigner class is already filled with a bunch of powerhouses. We already have Van Gogh, who's super good. We already have Yang Gui Fei, who manages to absolutely destroy opponents with her burn. And Mysterious Heroine Double X is an incredible uh, servant already, boss slayer, what have you, despite being only a four star. You also have to consider that we have some very powerful upcoming foreigners, Kukul Khan being the absolute premier one that we will see in the future. So despite the fact that Mole is an extra class and someone you'll want to go for if you don't happen to have any sort of foreigner extra class servants, maybe you missed the mysterious Idol X event and didn't get her for free. It's just the fact that her class is already populated with so many good characters that a character that is just good doesn't end up meeting the mark against other characters who are great. Unfortunate, but it is the reality of the situation, nonetheless. Still, runner on that curse team. Let me know how it goes. And as you head down the comments to let me know how that goes, let me know if you were able to summon Jacques de Mole. Let me know if she was the main servant you were looking for this event, or if you wanted to get somebody else. And let me know if there are any allies, craft essences, or command codes that I might have missed. Please check out the Discord, the Patreon, and the Ko-fi as well. Huge thanks to everyone on those platforms for all of their support, and a thanks to all of you here on YouTube as well for your continued support. I really do appreciate it. Anyways, gang, that's it for me, Kawaii50. I hope you all have a phenomenal day, and I will see you all in the next one.